emission systems test seven. This is about gasoline direct injection. And so how many of you know anything about gasoline direct injection? You got any idea? Anybody seen gasoline direct injection vehicles running around? How do you know? How do you know it's gasoline direct injection? I have two test sevens. Huh? I have two test sevens and they're both different. Well, we're doing the one on the engine performance, uh, excuse me, emissions systems test seven. Yeah, I have two test sevens. Huh? Ch chapter 21? You got chapter 21 over there? Yeah. That's the one you need right there. That other one that you got was numbered wrong. It was a different test, it was just numbered wrong. So th this one here's the one you got. Okay, uh, so um, now let me ask you to start with, where's the fuel injected in a port fuel injected engine? It's basically right behind the intake valve. So the last thing that the air sees before it goes into the cylinder is the tip of a fuel injector that spraying some fuel there. And the fuel injector sprays, and then for just a split instant, the gasoline is stored there, and then it is swept on in there by the air and uh, all that. But where is it injected in an engine equipped with gasoline direct injection? What would you think, based on what you, based on the name? Directly into the combustion chamber. Now, these things have got high fuel pressure. Um, and I'm giving you just some ballpark numbers out there. But the gasoline direct injection engines are, are have anything usually from 400 to 4,000 pounds of gasoline fuel pressure. I mean, it's really a lot. So what are we doing that for? What do you get if you've got higher pressure? You've got smaller droplets. If you've got smaller droplets, you've got more complete combustion, right? You're getting more power out of your fuel. And let me preface all this by saying, uh, you don't have any way to determine or to control on a port fuel injected engine when the fuel is injected or how it's injected, do you? The only thing you can control on a port fuel injected engine is how much you put in there, right? Got that? Okay, on a gasoline direct injected engine, not only can we determine when it goes in there and how much goes in there, we can actually determine how it's delivered. Now you can have what they call a stratified charge or a homogeneous charge. So somebody tell me what homogeneous means. What does it mean when milk is homogenized? Has anybody in here ever seen any milk that came from a, being a cow being milked? Huh? Well, I didn't ask you to drink some milk. I'm just asking you to... <laughs> I understand lactose intolerance is a problem. But basically, if you've milked the cow like my grandmother used to do, she would have a dish pan with milk in it in there. And if you just reached in there and dipped off the top of that, you'd get cream. Because the cream would come to the top and the rest of the milk was of a different quality. So when you homogenize milk, you make sure that whenever the milk sits in the refrigerator, what's on the top is not cream. Got me? So, let's back up again. You got a homogenized charge. Basically, you're just gonna spray it in there and let it burn. But on a stratified charge, you're gonna pop it in there like a machine gun. Like that, and you can actually control your burn somewhat. That's why you see smaller engines uh, like you've got a, some of these uh, EcoBoost engines that Ford's got out there are one liter engines, you know, and they're gasoline direct injected and they're turbocharged and all that. So basically, the fuel pump inside the fuel tank on a vehicle equipped with gasoline direct injection produces about how much pressure? What are you used to seeing? How much pressure you usually got on a fuel injected engine? We're going 50 to 60 on this one. And the hap that, that pump is actually uh, gonna be delivering fuel uh, to the gasoline direct injection pump. Okay, and the high pressure fuel pump used in gasoline direct injection systems, what's it powered by? What would you think it would be powered by? 
It's not electricity. It's actually got a lobe on the camshaft. And it's a real uh, dense looking little brick of a fuel pump that's mounted right up on top of the engine. You can see it if the covers are moved out of the way. And it, it's made to withstand extremely high pressures and all that. And so uh, basically, it is, well, not just to withstand high pressure, but to create high pressure. Um, but the, the pressure that it's creating is controlled by the engine controller. But that's our next question. So number three is going to be B. Number four, the high pressure fuel pressure is regulated using, how would you regulate it? Exactly, an electric pressure control valve, because it is what I told you, the PCM uh, controls the pressure. It wants to know how high it is. If you got low, uh, high pressure, you know, high gasoline pressure that's too low, you won't have any power. Uh, GDI fuel injectors operate under a pressure of about, what did I say earlier? It's going to be C, it's going to be uh, 500 to 2900 PSI. Um, fuel injectors used on a gasoline direct injection engine are pulsed using what voltage? That's interesting, isn't it? 50 to 90 volts. Now, anybody that's worked on power stroke diesels is familiar with that. Also, on uh, you know how many of Chevy Duramax diesel with common rail injection uses 93 volts to fire the injector? That's what it used for a long time. And the uh, old 7.3 power strokes used 115 volts. The uh, six liter used 47 volts. I mean, so they're all using higher voltage, you know what I mean? So, uh, to operate that. Now, why would we use such high voltage? Anybody got any idea about that? Why couldn't we just do it with 12 volts? We want it to be faster. Like, for instance, if you've got, even on a port fuel injected engine, you basically have injectors that have a very low coil resistance so they can operate a lot quicker. Uh, and it's really something how they tweak that kind of stuff. Uh, what mode of operation results in a richer air fuel mixture near the spark plug? See? Stratified, that's what I was talking about earlier. You got a richer air fuel uh, mixture near the spark plug, but it, you know, away from the spark plug. So it's not even, it's not a homogeneous burn inside the cylinder. It's actually burning in waves, bop, 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 you know, the way that they spray it in there. Um, some gasolines that use gasoline direct injection system also have port injection. Is that true or false? Believe it or not, that's true. Um, gasoline direct injection system can be used to start an engine without the need for a starter. That's true. Matter of fact, I've known of these, uh, the old DuraSpark system, like you see that one on the board over there, this bottom, it says 74 Ford DuraSpark. Uh, that thing's got the coil dead short at the ground all the time, even if you just got the key on, which is really strange because you can't do that with an E-core coil, but you could the old oil fill coil. And when you turn the key on, I've seen them things fire the coil just one time. And uh, there's a 306 in there, 306 cylinder engine, straight six with that old Duraspark system on it. And the mechanic, all he did was switch the key on. He didn't even uh, turn it to start position. And it fired, and it happened to be pointing to a spark plug that has some mix in there, and that engine started up without him even even hitting the starter. I mean, it just it fired the uh, attic, you know, the cylinder, poof, and it goes down. But I mean, you can actually uh, start an engine with gasoline direct injection without even using a starter uh, because of the, c uh, the control of the gas being able to go in there with the valves closed and all that stuff. Uh, of course, the PCM's got to know which cylinders where and all that, and it's going to be, gotta be fire the, put a little gas in there, fire the injector, and boom, the engine starts. A lack of power from an engine equipped with gasoline direct injection could be due to what? Actually, carbon on the injectors uh, would be the one. Now, what you actually have too uh, uh, is carbon on the intake valves is an issue too. Uh, well, he said both B and C, I'm sorry. I, fouled up on that answer. But carbon on the intake valves is an issue too. Uh, and that is an issue that you have on gasoline direct injections that you don't have nearly as bad on port fuel injected engines. Because if the, if the 
uh, injector is always spraying on the valve, it's always keeping it washed off, you know, for the most part. Years ago, when they first started putting electric fuel pumps, it became widespread uh, in these cars in the mid 80s. They started having trouble with the fuel pumps wearing out because the gasoline didn't have enough lubrication in it. So they had to change that up and put a little bit of greasy stuff in the gasoline. You might notice now if you get gas on your hand and you let it dry off, you feel greasy stuff, right? Okay, but they were also putting some stuff in there, little black, tiny little black particles called olefins. And they were wanting those olefins to go whipping through the fuel injectors and keep them clean like a little, like they were sort of sandblasting the tips of the fuel injectors. The only problem with that is those darn things would get trapped by when the injector panel closed and they'd start to build up and they'd start to stop up the injectors. And, for, and also they would pile up on the intake valves and they absorbed octane really good and they wind up causing all kinds of cold stumbles and everything. After, and we'd have to go in there with a special machine that had walnut holes that it was blasting out there and clean those intake valves with walnut holes. It was just a pain. When they finally stopped using those olefins in there, all that stuff went away though. Um, but yeah, B and C is correct on that. Uh, GDI equipped engines have a higher efficiency due to what? They got a higher compression ratio. You can have a high compression ratio like 10 to 1 on a gasoline direct injection engine and it won't even have to have premium gas, right? Uh, gasoline direct injection is also known as, what do you think? A. S-I-D-I, -I, actually. EFI would be the other kind. Uh, an engine equipped with gasoline direct inject injection may have as much to how much improvement in fuel economy? 25% more fuel economy on a GDI engine. You know, you got GDI engines running around everywhere out there now. I mean, they're just all over the place. So it's good to understand this stuff and know about it. Uh, the SIDI high pressure fuel pump uses a single barrel piston plunger that is driven by, what do you think? Square load cam, three load cam, electric motor, single flat sided cam. Well, you know it's not an electric motor. We've already been there. It's got a three-lobed cam on the camshaft that, that drives that thing. Um, a GDI system operating in stratified mode results in a rich air fuel uh, mixture near the spark plug tip. We talked about that earlier too. Uh, which one did I skip? 15. 15. When the fuel pressure regulator is deactivated, the fuel pressure defaults to what? That's actually going to low pressure mode. Uh, that's a crazy thing there. I know that uh, on the, uh, the oil control pressure on the power strokes, whenever you, uh, there was, it was a, had a little regulator like this. If you unplug that one, it would go to low. If you unplug a power stroke, it tops out. And the, the fuel on a power, I mean, excuse me, on a power stroke, on a Duramax. Duramax will top out at, uh, you know, but it's funny to me how it's go like 23,000 pounds of pressure, you know, fuel pressure, when you unplug, I don't know why they'd go that way. It seems to me like they'd go low, not high, you know. Um, let's see. Uh, when compared to a fuel, uh, port fuel injected engine, a GDI engine uh, is going to have a higher compression ratio. Here, let me jump over to number 17. What GDI operating mode is used to burn sulfur from the NOx catalyst? The heck was 16. Did I miss 16? No, you had 16. No, I had 16. That's it. She went to sleep. All right. Uh, that was a rich air fuel mixture near their spark plug tip. Stratified heating mode is something it uses to burn sulfur from the NOx catalyst. Uh, it heats up real good. It'll burn it off there. Um, which component of this GDI high pressure pump is the pressure regulator? C or D? D? Seriously? What did you say? Repeat everything you just said. Huh? D. D? What did you say before you said D? I said D. All right, now, you guys back up and think now. How does it, what operates it? How does it operate it? We talked about that on a previous question. Doesn't it operate electrically? What electrical component do you see on that picture? A. I thought you were an 18. Huh? What? 
See, that thing actually opens up and lets the pressure go somewhere else instead of out of the way. Did you stumble and fall down? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>